Hi, this is Paisley Trees. This is Dr. Crow. And welcome to episode eight of us playing Civ 6 as the Ottomans. Yeah. Um, perhaps finally coming back to this. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been a while, right? It has, yeah. I got a haircut. Yeah, that's true. You're looking good, Eric. We switched Dr. places. Dr. Crow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why we did that, but we did move things around. Um, shout out to my brother. He came to visit us, so we had to move our desk mm -hmm. into the dining room, and we never moved it back. Yeah. So... Yeah. <laughs> Let's think about where we are in this game. Yeah, um, I think we're in the end game, I think. think so? Yeah, pretty sure. Well, we did conquer the capital of Hungary, yes. uh, Buda, and we are now working towards, I believe, um, the Byz Byzantine, but maybe the Polish. Maybe the Polish. It seems like the Byzantines are pretty well protected right. geographically. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. It's like a hassle. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And there's only one way through here or yeah. one way through here. So maybe it's better to go around. It's like Mordor or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and otherwise, that's basically it. And here we're working towards uh, Persia. And in terms of what I'm building, I got the terracotta army going. Nice. Um, some workshop. Nobody comments on how useless that is. <laughs> um, and I don't know. I mean, should I be building more units, you think? I think building units is always good for us, yeah. They just take a while to get there. And I yeah. do have money to buy stuff. Um, and then here... I think they're all just going to get a promotion, so I don't mm -hmm. have to think about their health too much and That's just start good. moving forward. That's good. Yeah, and I believe we got peace with Buddha, with Hungary, so I can just move through their territory. Um, a little cheeky of me, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Great, so let's get started. Yeah. Um, and it looks like, did I know there was a wonder here? If I knew, I forgot, wow. but good to know. Okay, let's go check it out. Yeah. And otherwise, in terms of uh, tech, we're working on the guild. Nice, Esnaf. Esnaf, right? Which um, I'm not building that anymore. <laughs> uh, I don't even, like, I feel like the campus was the first thing I pinned. Yeah. And I never built it. I don't even have the space to build it. Yeah. Uh, whoops. What are you going to build now? I guess, well, I have two trebuchets here so i guess i can just work on like infrastructure like my favorite Ooh, aqueducts, aqueducts. Yeah. yeah very nice so i guess we could start the conversation there right with um water supply yeah my your favorite, favorite topic, topic. jinx, <laughs> jinx. um you me a soda. uh yeah so i mean obviously istanbul is very well known maybe not obviously but <laughs> <laughs> some people because we're very, in, you know, immersed in water stuff. Uh, Istanbul is, uh, has one of the kind of most uh, extensive water infrastructure systems of any kind of like pre-modern city, right? It's was had that during the Roman times, had it during the Byzantine times, and this was expanded and expanded during Ottoman times as well. So if you go to Istanbul, you'll see all these old aqueducts and reservoirs and cisterns and dams and you know i remember when you were doing your research it was actually the inspiration for new york's water system right yeah so a lot of travelers in the late 19th century go to well you know it's it's throughout the ottoman period but um specifically in the late 19th century where questions of cholera and disease mm -hmm. are pushing people to think differently about water systems um you have this sort of searching for alternatives to disease uh ridden uh like yeah. <laughs> water sources like the thames in london um, and then also in sort of Chicago, they do this really interesting thing of lifting the city up mm -hmm. to incorporate sewage and pipe systems underneath. Um, and one of the alternatives to these like different water systems was the fountain and aqueduct system of uh, Istanbul or Constantinople. Um, yeah, so do you want to talk about uh, how the aqueducts were sort of changed during the Ottoman period? Because a lot of them are from earlier mm -hmm. um there are some added of course and expanded on um so do you want to talk about that while i decide <laughs> sure. what i do here i mean yeah, I, I, I mean, think i don't need to do anything here I, yeah. I should probably pillage more build more builders but cool yeah i mean you know the ottomans they really expand the byzantine network they renovate it and they 
you know, add in some additional kind of features. So if you go to Istanbul, you'll, you'll see these, you know, large towers, which are called water scales, Su Terazi. And um, they Su are... Su Terazi, right? Terazi or Terazi? I think it's Terazi. Maybe it's Terazi. Oh, I'm not sure. Interesting. Um, but it's like I was a, just I was just saying it again because you kind of mumbled. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, not not a correction, just a just a. Terazis, I don't know. Maybe terazi. Su terazis. Yeah, have to look it up. Uh, water terraces. Yeah, translation. You know, it was designed to kind of maintain the pressure in the water system. And if you go to Istanbul, there's all these fountains and mm -hmm. baths, and they all have, you know, this very extensive water connection which is provided for free to the public as part of this kind of act of imperial charity or, you know, uh, charity of the kind of notables of the city um, and also, you know, private kind of individual charity as well. So it's a very interesting sort of uh, ethos of water and a culture of water. And there's mm -hmm. a um, famous saying about the Turks from the 19th century that says that the Turks are a are connoisseurs of water as other nations are of wine. So, Yeah, and that comes from this idea that water can have different tastes. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of times you'll see streets named like sweet waters or I guess like uh, salty, salty, bitter. bitter yeah. um, and that really comes from this relationship with water that's uh re that's sort of layered by this concept of taste mm -hmm. um that we don't really have anymore i guess today we would just kind of talk about good and bad water yeah you usually feel like oh man this water <laughs> tastes like something that's bad right like yeah you're not you want water to taste like nothing right right we have this concept that good water ta is tasteless and yeah. bad water has a taste although if you've ever been to new york that is some tasty water yeah i do love the water of new york yeah um, that's why the pizza is so good apparently well the pizza yeah like pizza beer and coffee a lot of times you'll have this sort of range and flavor because of the water itself mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, which i think is pretty cool okay we're getting exploration very yeah. nice and we got a great person cool. oh um el Said. al Said. al Said. who is el Said? he's a spanish um warrior during the kind of period in which the moorish civilization was coexisting with the spanish cool and uh he was a kind of chivalrous figure who was represented in epics and poetry and he kind of moved between the the muslim and christian peoples so he, here's my question do i put him in gdansk which i never looked up if that's the right way to say it <laughs> uh and help on the polish front or do i put him in buddha and help with the persian front i mean look at persia i'm gonna say like Very no leech. offense but persia is uh <laughs> <laughs> offense taken it's not doing too well um but then it really helps with movement and i only have three janitors three dudes, yeah. but this front does seem a little bit scarier with 60 defense versus yeah. 27 yeah so i guess we're going to gdansk nice no one corrects me <laughs> <laughs> let's go to gdansk go to gdansk uh the, yeah someone cancel it Dr. Crow, please. <laughs> I guess we can start on the Grand Bazaars a little bit. So is there anything else to say about water? I mean, obviously, I'm writing an entire dissertation yeah, so on just, it. Yeah, so just wait. Just wait. <laughs> well, it's we'll coming get, out. Yeah, yeah. A couple of years. <laughs> In a, couple, a couple of years, you know. Well, a couple of years for the dissertation, and then the yeah. book is a couple of more Long-term. <laughs> Long-term request. Everyone keep thinking water is important. No one, yeah. you know, say, oh, this is such yes. a Climate change, please keep happening. <laughs> no, <laughs> don't, don't. No, slow down so I can still write about this. <laughs> um, do I need any of this promotion? I have no idea. I mean, I kind of wanted to get past ritual, but I, okay, let me build my grand bazaars first and then I can do that. Mm -hmm. Um, and then does anyone, oh yeah, I should probably get our mom on my side. I think I was already trying to do that. Let's do it. Nice. Ah, nice. So now we have access. A little bit more spaces to heal as well. Yeah, perfect. Well, I don't need that because I'm going to get the terracotta army in six turns. Nice. There's a little Byzantine knight coming up. Yeah, I really want to ask for peace. I cannot yet, um, grant duplicate. Let's do coffee. I think I got a lot of coffee. Nice. Topical. 
I only have one vote. Um, okay, and then she's... Wait, why is that topical? Because it's Turkish coffee. Oh, yes. <laughs> like, generally topical. Uh, I don't... I I guess me here? I don't mean it doesn't even matter. I don't have enough votes, but let's see how this see. situation works. Oh, wow. I get 100% more grievances. It's, it's the opposite. Hmm, that's confusing. <laughs> um, and coffee... Grants no amenities. Great, great. I'm really happy about all this. <laughs> Hopefully. Um, I mean, everyone's going to hate us sooner or later, so it's okay. Yeah, it's true. Great. And Let's go uh, check out that wonder. Is it, do we need the, yeah, we can use the era score. Yes, Here we go. Yosemite. Very nice. We've been there. Yeah. Do you want to talk about Yosemite? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a beautiful place. Why not? Well, I don't know anything about Yosemite. Well, we listened Got to that whole podcast. Half, half dome. Yeah. Oh, here's something. Yeah. Half dome is not actually a half dome. It's actually a 70% dome. When did you learn that? I don't remember. <laughs> I saw it on the plaque. I don't recall this. Most of the dome is still there. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Kind of. So uh, correct any of your friends that <laughs> say call it half dome. It's a 75% dome, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that'll make you popular. <laughs> okay, three turns to peace here. So let's try to just get out of the way. You know, leave me alone, please. I, I want peace, actually. And then, actually, when can I upgrade these units? Uh, maybe that should be my goal. What is the, what is the next thing? Bombard. Maybe I should do that, actually. Yeah. Okay, whoops work on that now and there we go um what were we talking about <laughs> <laughs> i kind of forgot what were we going on oh about? no what is yeah <laughs> just appeared suddenly here <laughs> wait what were we <laughs> talking about water yeah oh there's something we moved on yeah oh, but okay. one thing we should get oh yeah to, yosemite <laughs> yosemite yeah one thing we should talk about is I guess as we're nearing the kind of end game aspect um, is kind of the late 17th or 1700s and early 1800s. Right. And this is a really a big period of transition, period of revolution, very exciting period in Ottoman history. And there's kind of three really big kind of, you could say, oh, you know, cultural revolution, social revolution, political revolutions that happen. One is called the New Order, Nizam al-Jadid. One is the reign of this sultan called Mahmoud II. And the third is this very important thing called the Tanzimat, which is like a whole-scale reorganization of Ottoman political culture. So we'll get into the details about those as we go on. Um, but yeah, this period is a very, very interesting period for sure. Right. Um... My uh, crossbowman almost just died Whoa. here. So I need to be a little bit careful. And yeah. I declared war on Poland because right they now. asked. They asked. They asked. Okay. Maybe I should have lied. I probably should have lied. Um, but, you know, they just have man at arms, so maybe mm -hmm. it's okay. And then do I need to take this out? Probably because it's kind of like in the way. So maybe I'll do. I mean, I just probably should have waited. Hmm. Not going to lie. But, yeah, let's just do it. Okay. And then I'll get my promotion, so maybe I can just take this out now. Oh, um, yeah, and, yeah, so the Nizam al-Jadid, actually, I think is a good mm -hmm. place to start talking about the military. I think that relates to what's happening to me right now. I yeah. have this army that's still pretty good. Yeah, not bad. The Janissaries. But um, they're becoming a little bit more... Um, they need a little bit more training, maybe. They need a little bit more assistance. Yeah, they're getting a little bit outclassed. Starting, yeah. starting to happen. And yeah. uh, so the Nizam al-Jadid is... By this guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is really like a... It's intended to be a whole-scale kind of cultural change, but it it starts with the army. Right? The, the idea is that the army can be the kind of vector through which all these social reforms can take place. And so... As we discussed in the last episode, you know, with it, during the 1700s, there's a kind of movement from, you know, a more centralized empire to a more decentralized one. 
And, you know, this kind of creates problems because you end up with all these kind of independent local notables and warlords who are kind of like semi-independent. Like they're pretty much calling themselves the rulers of their own territories. And, you know, they're, they're starting to get a little bit, you know, a little bit uh, outrageous. So, <laughs> so outrageous. I don't know. I mean, you know, like, you know, in terms of just kind of flouting imperial authority right and so the Nizama Jadid says okay what we're gonna do is start confiscating you know tax farms that are vacant we're gonna start confiscating who died your crossbowman no my crossbowman died oh no that's really rude actually yeah um, can we please have peace one more turn Oof. oh no I kind of needed that one do too. you want to just buy one you have enough money yeah, but like I'm sure it was like very leveled up too. Wait, how many more turns till the terracotta? Four more turns. So maybe I will buy more actually. Yeah. Um, I just need to like kill this guy right now. Or I need to promote first. Um, yeah, so speaking of getting outclassed <laughs> and outrageous. Yeah, can that <laughs> other crossbowman shoot this guy? Yeah. Nice. Is that enough? Finally. Yeah, great, that's great, good. Great. So who's this? This is Sun, uh, Sun Tzu. Sun Tzu. Art of War. Who helps just my crossbowmen right now, but okay, maybe I should... Just the one guy. Or two guys, I guess. Two, two, two. I got two left. Yeah. Um, and the trebuchets, but they're going to get upgraded in two turns. Mm -hmm. So I should get those in position soon. Um, and, and then this is the other general. Okay, great. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, sure. So um, with the... A session of Sultan Selim the Third, um, which comes right after this disastrous war of Russia, right, where the Ottomans are just totally getting their butts kicked. <laughs> um, so when the, was that? This would be in the 1770s, 1780s. Um, basically, the Ottomans kind of get really overconfident. They think Russia, no problem, um, and then Russia turns out to be a big problem. <laughs> but uh, so Selim gathers up all of his advisors, his ministers, and says, all of you need to write a report to me about how to fix this problem. And so we have this record of this report. So, you know, some of them are like, don't worry about it. <laughs> you know, others are like, worry about it. Yeah, worry <laughs> about it. Um, some are just like, you know, we need to change the moral character of our society, right? We need to stop consuming so many luxuries and giving all of our gold and silver to foreign countries. Others are like, we've lost the plot of, you know, Islam. We need to get back to a... <laughs> we've lost the plot of Islam. <laughs> I like how you put that. We need to get back to a more, you know, rigorous form of religious discipline. And then others are like more, you know, about techniques of rule and technology. And then we need to adapt this technology and uh, politics, this economic structure and so Salim takes all these reports and they kind of begin to coalesce into this thing called the New Order. Um, and so the New Order troops, they are unlike the Janissaries, they're conscripts. They are drawn not from Christians, not from you know these kind of heterodox Muslim groups, but they're drawn from Anatolian peasants. They are given this very rigorous training with European officers and this kind of very rigid religious instruction which is designed to make them both militarily disciplined and socially disciplined mm -hmm. and beyond this economically to support this army they are creating kind of local industries right they're saying we're going to create a uniform factory here and an artillery factory here all in the Ottoman Empire so it's going to be a kind of, you know, bringing these industries back into the empire rather than importing things from abroad. Um, okay, sh should I? I made peace with the Byzantines. Yeah. Should I have them join my war for 21 gold? Why not? 21 gold per turn is a lot. That's true. What if I give you... Oh, I could just give oh, them tea. Just give them some tea. Perfect. What if, Do you want some spice? That's good enough for right, me. Let's do yeah. That. Yeah, hopefully that'll be helpful. I just really need some tea. <laughs> and spices. <laughs> um, great. Uh, 
Yeah, so the the Nizam e Jadid, do you want to、um, talk about the controversies? Yeah, so obviously, many people were upset about this for a couple of reasons. You know, there were people like the Janissaries who saw this clearly as an encroachment on their privileges, right? There were the local notables who saw that there was now this clique in Istanbul that was appropriating all this power, appropriating all these funds for themselves. And the Nizam e Jadid people, We're not just gathering money for the army. They were skimming a lot off for themselves as well. And, you know, and, and Selim's rule was also quite draconian、uh, as well. So you can maybe see some similarities with the Tulip era in this regard. So, in order to kind of justify what they're doing, the Nizam e Jadid clique decide to write this pamphlet called. The Koja Sekban Basha Treatise. And this means、uh, Koja Sekban Basha is like their f- character that they take on. And they claim he's like a 90 year old Janissary who's seen all the wars, seen, you know, he's just the most Janissary guy of all. <laughs> and he's like, I love the new order. <laughs> you know? And they're posting this all around the city, posting this on the walls. And, you know, to make it seem authentic, they make him like, Speak in like a really rough dialect, and he's swearing all the time. <laughs> and he says that basically, look, the Ottomans are in the age of revolutions. There's a French Revolution, the American, the Haitian Revolution. And if the Ottomans don't reform from the top down, they're going to get reformed from the bottom up. Right. So he says the Nizam e Jadid is meant to preserve the security of the Ottoman state, unlike what's going on in France, where he says, People are eating each other and <laughs> you know, going crazy, right?、Uh, he says, like, it's rivers of blood over there in France. We don't want that. So we need to do something ourselves. Right.、Um, and then he goes on to say the Janissaries are, you know, corrupt. They are, you know, sexually corrupt as well. He says that, you know, they're just spending all their time, you know, Hanging out with like young boys and stuff, right? So he says that unlike them, the Nizam e Jadid army is disciplined. They are, you know, regular. They're not going to engage in these activities. Right. So they are, there's this kind of social conflict. And what happens is, is that essentially both the local notables, you know, the people in the provinces and the Janissaries, Realize that they should strike while they have the upper hand.、Um, and this is what they do, right? They, they stage a civil war, basically, a coup.、Um, and the kind of resistant faction moves on Istanbul, and then Nizam Ajit the deed collapses, basically. Right.、Um, so this sort of upgrade that was needed doesn't quite work, right? Yeah, it doesn't quite work. And. You know, it actually produces a lot more social strife, right? Yeah.、Um, so、I'm, How's I, it going? <laughs> I need to upgrade my military now. Yeah, let's, let's see these bombards. If anybody starts protesting this. <laughs>、um, but it looks like it's going okay. Who are you again? Okay, I need to like, make you. Who are you? <laughs> doesn't even go here.、Uh, okay, so I have to be careful with promotions and this finishing. Three turns.、Mm-hmm. Wasn't it three turns last turn? Yeah, what's going on? Um, which is fine. So let me make sure I make, get all my promotions. Yeah, I'll promote now against cities, yes. And、um, I did buy another crossbowman, you were right.、Mm-hmm. Um, and I have a loyalty issues here. That's strange given、mm. Ibrahim Pasha's there. But I will grow in one turn, so maybe that'll help. Yeah. And then、um, I did also buy another Janissary here just to、nice. get ready for the promotions. Yeah.、Um, and yeah. Great. So, speaking of sort of military things,、mm-hmm. what happens to the Janissary? So, keep going with this story, I guess. So, what happens is they depose Selim, and you know, they're basically in the palace, just wiping out the Ottoman dynasty. And you know, they find some like in a closet somewhere, <laughs> there's this young boy who is a prince, Mahmoud, and they're like, <laughs> In a closet? <laughs> yeah, he's like, they try to hide him in a closet.、Uh-huh. And、uh, they drag him out, 
and the janissary commander is like, you know, who's this kid? And the guy says, well, this is our new sultan. So <laughs> they make him the new sultan. And they think this kid doesn't know what he's doing. Right. He's going to be easy to just manipulate. And, you know, during this time, the local notables sign this kind of treaty, which is called the Deed of Alliance, which basically says that we're going to be running things from now on. Well, Mahmoud. Oh, God. Whoa. My horseman's probably dead. I should probably buy another unit here. A lot here. of bandits going on here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ignore that. Keep going. <laughs> this is like a Nizam Jadid thing going on here. Yeah, well, yeah, this horseman probably <laughs> yeah. needs to be upgraded. Maybe yeah. I should buy something. I should probably also buy a trader. Um, I mean, I already have Arma, so I don't know if I need another city state. Maybe mm -hmm. just out of uh, Baghdad, I think, was where we wanted our mm -hmm. traders out of. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yes, but Mahmoud the second. He's like a schemer. Like he's, he's thinking about it the whole time. The guy um, they found in the closet. The guy they found in the closet. The is kid. A schemer. Yeah. This child is a schemer. He's a, I mean, he just saw like his family get killed in front of him. <laughs> right. And uh, he's, you know, he's like, okay, I'm going to bide my time. I'm going to wait. And when the moment, you know, presents itself, I'm going to get my revenge, right? Yeah. And so... Over time, he starts to gradually kind of accrue different powers to himself. And what really, you know, starts off this huge chain of, of violence that almost destroys the empire is when he decides he's going to one by one take out these local notables. First one he takes out is this guy named Ali Pasha, who is in the kind of northern parts of Greece. How many Ali Pashas are There's there? There's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... You know, Ali Pasha, you know, Mahmoud sends his army, wipes them out. Uh, if you ever read the Count of Monte Cristo, it talks a little bit about Ali Pasha. Cool. There's a whole little subsection in that story because they were paid by the word. So he just filled in <laughs> whatever he wanted. Um, but he wipes out Ali Pasha. But Ali Pasha was kind of like a supporter of the arts, basically, in that region. He was very interested in Greek literature, Greek philosophy. And so there was a lot of sympathy for him in Greece, right? Among the, you know, Greek intellectuals. So when he wipes them out, there's all of a sudden all these kind of rebellions breaking out in Greece. Most of them are kind of local, mostly things about high taxes, oppression, that kind of stuff. But there's also at this time in Europe a very strong movement called Philhellenism, which is all about the revival of Hellenic culture. And so what starts out as this kind of small-scale revolt becomes a national uprising. And Mahmoud uses this as an excuse to start wiping out the other power brokers in the empire, right? To kind of centralize power in the midst of this war. Um, during this time, he executes the patriarch of the Greek church. He is kind of, you know, consolidating all his power. Um, and, you know, the Greek war turns into this, like, grinding conflict of massacres and all these things. And then that spurs sympathy in Europe. So all these important figures like Lord Byron go to fight for the Greeks and ends up this whole thing. Um, there were seven and in the world. And the discovery of the Terracotta army, Mahmoud is ultimately forced to call on the aid of another local noble named Muhammad Ali Pasha. Right. Who's Albanian? Or... Yeah, yeah, he's Albanian. <laughs> <laughs> of Egypt or Al Albania, Eric? He's, he's Albanian, but he lives in Egypt. Right. And he takes command of the forces in Egypt. Um, I just got the Terracotta nice. uh, army. Um, which one's better? When fighting in a district versus anti-cavalry units? I guess urban warfare is a little bit better here. Yeah. And now we can promote... Ooh, everybody, our cannons, yeah. Our cannons, everybody. You okay. get a promotion. You <laughs> get a promotion. Uh, and versus district defenses. Yes, I'm going that after sounds cities. Good. Yeah, yeah. And so we can move in, start promoting, get all Elite the way to guard. Wow. Or nice. Um, move to pluck. Oops. Yeah, this is exciting. I think. The Janissaries still got, you they know, still got it. they still got it. <laughs> They're uh, still a little bit useful. <laughs> but anyway, so like, 
you know, the Greek War turns into this whole thing. Eventually, Britain and France intervene, and Mahmoud is forced to give up uh, Greece, you know, but also, very sad for the Greeks, they end up basically as a colony of yeah. Western Europe. Well, that's the thing most people uh, sort of don't know, or mm-hmm. maybe... Uh, isn't quite emphasized enough is that the the Greeks are fighting for their independence mm-hmm. and what happens or the outcome of that is with the British and Europeans becoming so involved in that fight mm-hmm. they then uh, feel that they have this sort of um, I don't know this like right to then dictate what happens in Greece after they mm-hmm. get their independence from the uh, the Ottomans. Mm-hmm. And so they're put in under this, I mean, I don't know what the right word is. It's not really dictatorship, but it's almost like rule of the German um, empire, right? Yeah, they find this random Bavarian prince and they're like, okay, you're king of Greece now. Bring all your Bavarians over. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the Greeks are not happy about this. Um, but, yeah, there's a, there's a famous uh, Greek writer who says that Greece was the first third world country, by which he means that it was independent, but economically dependent, right? And, you know, it was politically still ruled by, you know, the influence of Western powers. I'm about to declare war on Persia. I think Mm -hmm. it is time. Hopefully this is not a mistake. Uh, Let's see. And yeah, and I think uh, one of the interesting things about a place like Greece is that it's able to sort of um, work within this concept of whiteness and Europeanness, and mm-hmm. yet they're sort of marginalized in that category because mm-hmm. of their proximity to the Ottomans and um, because of just their, you know, they're not a very powerful nation at this point. Or, sorry, sorry, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, so really, it would, uh, I'm trying to fight for you. I know it's not coming <laughs> off very well. Here. But, uh, you know, well, because they're not like an imperial power. Yeah. Um, and so I've, you know, I've written about Hiram Power's um, statue called the Greek Slave. It's at the school I study at. It's at the gallery. So I've written yeah, about this. Bo- uh, Brooklyn Museum. Has it's a there as well. Yeah. So there's a lot of copies. And one thing that I've argued about this um, statue is that it's really about this uh, in betweenness, Greek subjects are mm-hmm. in both white and non-white, and so it's about her Christianity and her uh, sort of being sold in the slave in the slave markets of the Ottoman Empire, and sort of creating that sympathy for her. But at the time, Powers was not an abolitionist, even though he becomes one later on. And that sort of way of fo- like thinking about slavery doesn't translate to his own American context. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think whiteness has a lot to to do with that. But at the same time, the Greeks are not fully considered white. They're considered tainted by the Ottomans. They need the Germans are considered like the inheritors of the Greek tradition, not the Greeks themselves. And so they Mm -hmm. need the Germans to teach them how to be Greek. Right. Uh, It's like a... All very offensive stuff. Yeah. (laughs) And, you know, there is a kind of counter movement or subversion of this, you know, in Greek culture of the 19th century, where, like, if you wanted to say, I'm dropping out of the society, like, I I don't fit in with the society, you would take on, you know, Turkish characteristics, and you would speak in a kind of exaggerated Turkish accent. And that's how we get, you know, forms like, um, you know, Rebetiko and stuff, like, as musical forms are really about this kind of um, dropping out of that westernizing society. Right, and you see this with other, like, marginal uh, European... Um, peoples like Russians, you'll also see this with. Um, yeah, like uh, like this idea that you can have this like arabesque music in uh, Jewish culture as well. Uh, so it's really like in the twentieth century, you have this balancing of do we want to be European or do we want to sort of embrace this otherness in our tradition? And you really see this sort of formulation of what it means to be a European nation at this time. Yeah, for sure. Um, So what happens after the Greek War is that Mahmoud II says, you know, you you got your Janissaries, they didn't do too well in that war. Like, 
<laughs> he kind of messed up. My Janissaries did very <laughs> well in this war. We got Polak. We got Polak. We plucked Polak from the Polish. Oh my god. This is this these are the moments I wish yeah. we did edit our videos yeah. <laughs> so I could take that out. <laughs> um, um but yeah. I think they have a a holy set. Yes. So this okay. is what I've been waiting for. Okay. I've been waiting for Polak. I've been waiting. <laughs> because now I want to found my religion so it comes all the way there and then use um missionaries and stuff. I don't know if it'll work. Oh, I probably should have waited literally one turn my bad my bad that's okay we're not gonna get to the other age anyway you don't think so no i don't think so okay well i hopefully that okay let's see did i find my where did my religion go was that what happened i don't know i think it'll prompt me in a bit hopefully okay. <laughs> and then i probably yeah should get like astrology or something um or i should get field cannons <laughs> never mind yeah, yeah never yeah. mind this religion thing is really like a plan B or like <laughs> the B side of this plan. Yeah. So what should we choose here? So I'm choosing the lion. Okay. I've thought about this right. because the lion is the symbol of Shi'i Islam. Well, that doesn't quite fit, but it's also the symbol of the Be Bektashis, right? Yeah, Bektashis are the sect of the Janissaries. Yeah. So I'm not spelling it in the Turkish way. My Turkish keyboard is off, but I will spell it like this. And then this was my idea. I wanted to get uh, Zen meditation because I need more amenities. Yeah. I think that'll help a lot. And then Crusade. Ooh. I don't know if this will work. I don't really play with religion a lot, but I wonder if I can convert the, Byz uh, the Byzantines and the Polish. So okay. let's see. All my right. religion's here. So now I got to buy certain things. Yes, yeah, so a little bit of faith saved up. Not enough, <laughs> uh, but enough to buy two things. Okay. So let's do it. And then hopefully I don't lose my religion right away. <laughs> uh, I don't really know how the mechanics of religion work fully, but let's try it. All right. And then, yeah, saving these. Yeah. So what Mahmoud says to the Janissaries is he says, you need to form like a group within yourself, like a kind of commando unit. And that unit will be trained in European methods, right? So he says, I'm not going to do a Nizam jadid type deal. I'm not going to create a separate army. You'll have control over it. You'll be involved in it. It's just we need to make a kind of, you know, special regiment in the Janissary Corps that's going to adapt to these modern methods. Janissary say, okay, we can try it, right? My scout died. It's okay. It's just a scout. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um... But what he does is he gets these Janissaries who are, you know, old guys. They've been in <laughs> war for a long time. They're very, you know, very, very um, proud of their seniority. And when he takes them into this corps, he gets these, you know, European officers. And he just treats them as if they're, like, right out of boot camp or in <laughs> boot camp. Like, he's, like, beating them and, like, <laughs> oh you know, God. smacking them and saying, like, you know, drop down and give me 20 kind of stuff, right? <laughs> And these guys are like, you know, the equivalent of like, you know, like majors and commanders, right? Like they're not going to take this. <laughs> so they get very, very annoyed and they say, well, we don't want to do this. Mahmoud uses this as an ex He uses to say that Janissaries are revolting, right? Well, they were revolting. They were just annoyed and provoked. Right. But what he does is he says, that's a revolt. You guys are traitors. And he gets his artillery corps, which is a kind of separate unit that he's been gradually building for this purpose. And basically uses his artillery to mow down the Janissaries, right? And, you know, he gathers them in one place and then attacks them. He starts driving them out of the cities. He starts, you know, wiping out every kind of remnant of Janissary sociality and culture in the cities. And so in 1826, the Janissaries are wiped out right in an event which is called the auspicious incident and you know i guess 
In my mind, this auspicious incident plays a lot out a lot like the Red Wedding of <laughs> Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah. Is that accurate or is that something like because I was watching the series when I uh, learned about this, <laughs> I have that association with. Honestly, that's the best way to think about it. <laughs> yeah. It really is like the Red Wedding. It's not like a single room, but honestly, that is pretty much what it's like. <laughs> oh no, that's us. <laughs> So, you know, he wipes out the Janissary core, and it is the end of that institution, basically. Right. Although some of them survive by basically going into other jobs, so they become, particularly firefighters is a really... Right. What is the word in, in Ottoman for firefighters? I remember it was really cute. It's tulumbaja. Tulumbaja. Yeah. Isn't that cute? Tulumba, Tulumba is like a Tulumbaja. kind of barrel device that has water. So nice. they're like spraying water out of barrels. Nice. Nice. Tulumbaja. Um, yeah. Isn't that cute? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so this city has 72 strength, but yeah. no walls. So major defeat still. Yeah. I think we need artillery for that. Uh, yeah, it's it's going to be a nine turn, so I think I need to wait a little bit longer. Wait, who is this again? Sun Tzu. Okay, you stay there. You, can you go to the front, please? There you go. And yeah, I think maybe I can um, pillage a few farms here. That would be helpful. So let's okay. move you here and then pillage next turn. Nice. Hopefully that'll be fine. And then here, I, like, I don't know how much this is going to do. <laughs> Nothing. Not very um, much. So maybe I need a different plan for oh, that. What about your cannons? Yeah, I don't know. We'll okay. see. Um, yeah, so let's just keep moving up. <laughs> and okay, let's just play one more turn before we stop for today. Sounds good. I think I can take Persia, hopefully, in this episode. Um, that would be good. Do you see any other hills? Yeah, okay, I can do some more mines there. Okay, how's Cairo doing? Uh, Cairo, don't worry about Cairo, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and then here, reform the coinage, right? More gold. Yeah, gold's always good. Yeah. And then can I do any deals with one gold? I don't think so. And in Idune, we just built our uh, Grand Bazaar, so we can work on, I don't know what, I guess some traders would be good. And yes, Adana, I wanted to move Magnus into and start chopping, I okay. think. I don't know how useful of a thing that is, but he's not doing anything else, right? Yeah. Uh, maybe I can get some boats out of Adana. Yeah, I've, that's true. This boat plan has been... <laughs> <laughs> Long term. Yeah. <laughs> but I want a boat. Okay, let's see what we can do in Persia. Oh my God. Ooh. Please stop. <gasps> Who died? No. Who just died? Was it my crossbowman? Who's crossbowman? That is so frustrating. And it was like a good one too. Who killed my crossbowman? That other crossbowman, I think. Oh, and this guy's like out here all alone. You probably shouldn't be here. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, whoops. Can I spread religion? Okay. This is very, very boring. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. <laughs> I'm like not very uh, skilled at the late game, so I don't even know what's happening. I was trying to get rid of that crossbowman at least. Yeah. And bring that Janissary forward. Yeah. Can these guys attack the... Uh... Okay. Yeah, I mean like this guy's a little bit too far. These crossbowmen are very useless right now. Yeah. Um, so I should probably not keep them out there. Great. And then, okay, let's try also converting with you. Hello? Can it? Can it no, all move? No, because it's another non-combat unit. Right? You think so? What if I unlink and switch? Yeah. No, it seems fine. I guess it's already done its movement. Okay. Okay. Next turn. And then, can, um, I don't know why this guy's just coming around this <laughs> way. Okay, yeah, here's the, up here. here's the here's the tricky situation. Yeah. There's another crossbowman almost dead, and it's a plus four one. Yeah, get him out of there. This is as far back as I can go. Um, and I need to just kill. Can you just bring that trebuchet up? I can, but that like then it, that it dies, which mm. I guess is fine. 
I'm moving around this way to get this crossbowman eventually. Mm -hmm. And what about you? You can hit this guy. Maybe that's good enough. Okay, I don't think I'm going to be able to get Persia this oh, turn. No. Um, well, clearly, I'm not going to be able to get Persia this <laughs> turn. Um, but I guess that'll be the cliffhanger. All right, can we get Persia? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I'm kind of stressed. <laughs> uh, but, you know, leave a comment on how little or how much confidence you have in my ability to get Persia. <laughs> Without having to regroup and rethink and redo the, like, move up the Janissaries to the next class. Do I need a Nizam Jadid or can I keep going is my question. Yeah, let's see. 